Hi, this is Eric from longboxreview.com. Welcome to the show. Today I wanted to talk a, a little bit, maybe a little, maybe a lot, uh, but I want to talk about Superman Reborn. This was a four-part uh, series, series, a four-part story in the Superman and Action Comics uh, titles, and uh, based on the uh, the ending to that, I thought I would uh, I thought I'd talk about that a little bit because it's it's interesting to me uh, for a few reasons that I thought I would discuss here. Uh, but first, uh, a couple things. One is that um, I will be talking about specific plot points, so be warned: uh, spoilers may be occurring as I talk about these things. And then, second, I just wanted to give a uh, a brief. I guess, overview of what got us to this point uh, for those who, who may not be uh, or may not be reading or or did read the Superman uh, stories as they came out after the New 52 launched. So just a quick synopsis. New 52 happened. Uh, we get the New 52 universe version of Superman and Clark Kent. Uh, fast forward a couple years and things are not going so great for our man of steel. And he eventually ends up dying, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, the, the pre reborn era. <laughs> these, 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 uh, demarcations in DC's history is just getting way out of hand. Oh, I said reborn. I meant rebirth era. Anyway, uh, so, uh, there's this, there's a scene where the new 52 version of Superman basically just, just, I don't know, kind of explodes in this. I'm not even really sure how to describe it. He just kind of, or no, I guess he, he kind of, there's this energy release and he kind of crumbles into dust. I think if, if I remember correctly, uh, that sets up, um, the fact that, uh, his energy supposedly goes into Lois Lane and Lana Lang and that's where the Superwoman title comes in. And then parallel to that, before Rebirth happened, we had the Superman, Lois, and Clark limited series, which uh, which came out of the Convergence event. Here we go. There's too many of these things, these events, these, these special things that DC does. Um, I love them and I'm irritated by them at the same time. But uh, anyway, so uh, there was this, this title, Superman, Lois and Clark, which featured the pre-Flashpoint Superman and Lois Lane and the fact that they they had their or, or were, did they have their son in that series or they're going to have the son? I don't know. Anyway, John Kent was born, I think, by the end of that, at the very least, uh, as I if I recall correctly. And then we find out. Uh, you know, flash forward again, we find out that that after the convergence thing, this event, that Superman, that Lois Lane, that Jonathan Kent, they somehow were absorbed into the New 52 universe. And so that, that pre-Flashpoint Superman has been tooling around Earth, um, doing Superman stuff in secret. And then, uh, as I said, when the New 52 Superman dies, uh, the pre-Flashpoint Superman shows up and then takes on the mantle of Superman. And of course, that sets up what I thought was an interesting dynamic in that we have this Superman that is, you know, he is Superman. He looks just like Superman, maybe a little bit older, but he's not the Superman that people like Batman and Wonder Woman and the other Justice Leaguers and other people uh, in the Superman world, uh, that they're used to. And so, you know, there's, there's a bit of distrust there at first. And there have been stories recently in Justice League that touch upon that directly, uh, things in the Superman title as well. When, uh, Rebirth launched with, uh, featuring the, the, the pre Flashpoint Superman as the lead character. And, uh, so I thought that was really interesting. Um, an interesting take on that. Uh, th this Superman is a bit different from the new 52 version of Superman in that he is, he's very protective. He's super, <laughs> super overprotective, uh, of, of especially his son and wife to the point where I think 
even that that this or that Superman will do things that he maybe would not have normally have done in 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 the sense of he's a father trying to protect protect his son. So I think he's even willing to go just a little too far <laughs> in protecting his son. Uh, I mean, in the sense of if he, if he's endangered, especially by say supervillains or whatever. And I totally get that. I'm, this isn't that's not a that's not a complaint. That's not a criticism. Uh, as a father myself, I totally get that uh, that uh, that uh, instinct to do whatever you can and should to protect your your son or daughter. So I, again, I find that interesting. So we got all these elements in play regarding Superman that I think are just really cool, and uh, and uh, then then we get this this uh, Superman Reborn storyline here in the last month or so as I'm recording this. Uh, like I said, there are four parts to this. All four parts, all four parts have come out. Oh, I, I forgot to mention there. There's a couple other things. Uh, let me let me back up. I just want to talk about the the, the new fifty two version of Superman. I have to admit that uh, even though I was excited to see a pre Flashpoint character because I you know I liked that universe before New Fifty Two came to be. I liked those characters. I like I liked where they were, where they had been developed. You know, to the point where they they. Hmm, let me rephrase that. <laughs> I like those characters where they had developed to that point. Uh, you know, Superman married Lois Lane. Uh, she's pregnant. Um, uh, all the stuff that happened with Batman. You know, just I just really I like I like the the stuff that was going on in the pre Flashpoint universe. You know, right before uh, Flashpoint occurred. Okay, so now back to Superman Reborn. So prior to this, like I said, Superman uh, the the pre Flashpoint Superman is now taken over, but there's also this new Clark Kent. This very human Clark Kent and and our Superman checks him out because he's like, who is this guy? Because because uh, I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth. Because in the, the in the new Fifty Two Superman storyline, uh, Lois Lane, the new Fifty Two version of Lois Lane, <laughs> this is going to get really well. It'll get, it'll get easier in a minute. Uh, that Lois Lane and I didn't read the storyline. I just know of it. So if I'm getting some details wrong, you know, and and you guys know about it, let me know. But uh, as far as I know, that Lois Lane outed Superman as Clark Kent or vice versa. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter. But uh, everyone knew that Clark Kent was also Superman. And so that set that New 52 Superman on this pass, pass on this path where he eventually died. And uh, Lois Lane, that 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 Lois Lane also died in the Superwoman book. Uh, in issue one, I believe it was that was the big reveal, uh, the big the big surprise at the end of that that uh, issue. And so now we have no new Fifty Two version of Superman or or Wonder Woman. But there's this, or sorry, Lois Lane. Wow, yeah, too many characters in my head at the moment. But now there's this Clark Kent person. Who is this Clark Kent? Because the Clark Kent that we know of died with with the new Fifty Two version of Superman. So who is this guy? So that's that's been the big question that's been going on uh, in uh, I think mostly in action comics. Let's see here. So like I said, Superman, our Superman checked him out. This Clark Kent is who he says he is, but he's 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 just a bit off. He's a bit odd, even for Clark Kent. <laughs> Uh, but you know, he seems harmless enough, but here in the last several issues before the Superman reborn storyline, he's starting to, I don't know, say things and do things that are suspicious at the very least, if not just kind of odd, I guess kind of odd at the very least, but, uh, but suspicious, perhaps almost dangerously. So, so he even, he even starts to think that he's in love with Lois Lane and starts to court her. Uh, he, uh, at some point finds out that Lois Lane has this son, John, and there's this, there's this other guy that looks just like him. And so that's what starts this storyline because that Clark Kent is starting to realize some things about himself. And that's basically where we start off with the Superman reborn four issue, uh, story. So 
uh, like I said, Superman Reborn parts one, two, three, and four. And what's really cool about this is that, so this is Superman issues 18 and 19 and Action Comics issues 975 and 976. And it's really kind of cool if you didn't see this, uh, if you stack the issues one on top of the other, you get this nice, uh, uh, image that blends into, so like, for example, eight, uh, Superman issue 18 and Action Comics 975, you put 18 on top of 975 and it continues the picture of, of, of Superman on the cover. And there's this, uh, green, or sorry, there's this stripe that's going down, uh, vertically on one side of the, of the, of the books and it continues on through all those books and shows you some images going through there. So it makes this nice, is nice, this nice Im- uh, set of images, one on top of the other. Why they did it that way as opposed to doing them side by side, I don't know. Uh, although I kind of think of it in terms of flight, you know, flying upwards or but although it's going down, doesn't, that metaphor doesn't quite work, but <laughs> oh well. But like I said, uh, Superman 18 has, um, the Kents and, uh, crypto on the cover but then on the, the big image on on the right side is superman they're showing half of his face he's smiling action comics 975 that has our has a clark kent changing into superman uh but the s on his chest is bleeding which makes you think well is this is this superboy prime coming back and that's actually that was a theory that i had read before i saw this cover uh, from someone that I follow on Twitter. And they, they said that their, their guess that was that this Clark Kent was Superboy Prime. And to which I responded, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who that person was at the moment, but I, I responded, Oh God, please no, because I hate, I really hate Superboy Prime. <laughs> I do not like that character, but it sure suggests that, uh, that this, this, this other Clark Kent is Superboy Prime. Uh, uh, Superman number 19 has the mysterious Mr. Oz on the cover and, um, a bunch of pictures, things that Mr. Oz has been, been, um, watching regarding Superman's life. And then finally, Action Comics 976 has a, a picture of both Superman, the New 52 and the pre-Flashpoint version. Uh, together on the cover, kind of they're crisscrossing a little bit, uh, sort of a sort of an X formation in a way. Uh, but you'll no- you you will notice that the new Fifty Two version of Superman has this red energy kind of crackling around him, and the pre Flashpoint Superman has this blue energy crackling around him, which was I thought really cool, and and it's a nice throwback to. The Superman Red, Superman Blue storyline, or uh, set of stories, I should say, because there was, I want to say it was in the 60s, maybe, that I'm not sure of, uh, where there was an actual Superman Red, Superman Blue story that I read in one of those old DC digests that I used to have. And it was literally, somehow, I don't remember how, but Superman got split into two, so there's a duplicate, and one of them wore a totally red Superman outfit and one wore a blue Superman outfit. So that's how you could tell them apart. <laughs> one of them married Lois, one of them married Lana, I believe, uh, you know, and then they had, they had the storyline. Anyway, I always loved that storyline. And then I think it was in the nineties, maybe, or maybe even the early two thousands where they brought that concept back with uh, Superman when he was in his energy forms. And so there was a blue Superman, there was a red Superman. I don't know much about that beyond that. But now they, they, they talk about, or they kind of touch on that a little bit here with these two Superman, not directly like Superman Red, Superman Blue, but, but I'll get into that later. I just thought that was a nice touch. Okay. So I normally talk about who does these issues, who, who is involved with these issues. So with, with the Superman issues, it's, it's uh, Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason on the story with Patrick Gleason on pencils. I think as far as number 18, let me check on number 19 real quick. Yeah. Uh, Mick Graniques, John Cleese on colors. So that's, that's the typical, um, or the, not typical. That's, that's the, uh, the crew that's been doing, you know, like, uh, Batman and Robin. Super, now the new Superman title. And then on, uh, the action comics side, that's Dan Jurgens as the writer. Uh, Doug Monk did the pencils. 
Well, there's actually two stories in in uh, 975 because that's considered an anniversary issue, I guess. But for the main Superman story, it's Doug Monk on pencils. And then on 976, uh, same thing. Jaime Mendoza does the inks on both. And... Oh, and Christian Alamy and Trevor Scott on inks on 976 as well. And uh, Will Quintana on colors on, um, yeah, on both. And uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, so there, that's the creative teams for the the, the main Superman Reborn storyline. Oh, I guess on 975, like I said, the, the, the second story, which I will tell you who worked on it, but I'm not going to talk about it just yet. Uh, but that's Paul Denny doing the writing chore with Ian Churchill as the artist and Mike Atia uh, as a color, color artist. Oh, and Rob Lee, I'm sorry. Rob Lee does the letters, I think on all of these issues. Yep. Looks like, looks like Rob Lee on all those. So that's good. Nice consistency there for the most part for, for the artists. Uh, okay. So there's that. So Superman reborn part one we get this open its prologue featuring Mr. Oz and uh, someone. Ha- so I don't know if you know about Mr. Oz. Mr. Oz has been watching Superman for a while now. This actually happened. Uh, I want to say it happened pre flashpoint when Jeff Johns was working on one of the Superman titles. I, I forget which one he introduced this Mr. Oz character. And then they just kind of went away. Uh, th- but then they brought him back. I f- think. Yeah. in uh, in the new 52, and he's been featuring, been featured more prominently here with, with, uh, more, more recently with the rebirth stuff. Anyway, so he's there. He's got his own menagerie. He's kind of like, um, brainiac in that way because he's got his own menagerie of people or, or creatures in the case of doomsday where he's, he's taken them off the table. As he said, I think he said that in relation to Tim Drake who is shown here. And Tim is kind of uncharacteristically jubilant in the fact that one of the um, uh, characters that Oz has trapped in his little pocket universe thing or whatever, wherever he is, Tim Drake is laughing, you know, Joker-like saying, you couldn't keep us all. Someone got out. And so then uh, we are shown this this cell where this person was held, and and here's all this graffiti on the wall uh, saying "Superman will save me," and then under the under that "Superman save me," and next to it, "Please, please, Superman, where are you?" <laughs> and there's a there's a lot of um, really kind of childlike art shown in the background, uh, featuring Superman and his cast of characters, and some things about Superman's history. It just you know a nice little um, summary of Superman, I guess. And then basically the rest of this issue, issue 18, is uh, the the other Clark Kent shows up and uh, leaves this um, f- uh, photo book and, and has on the front the Kents. And it's got all these pictures of uh, the, the basically going out uh, go, or going back through time of the Kent family, including some things involving Clark and his parents. But but things aren't quite right with it, and then suddenly uh, there's this white fire that just that um, uh, starts supposedly burning their house. But it's not really fire, it, as it says. It uh, as Lois says, it's eating away the whole sink area. Like and Superman uh, says, it's like it's being erased. And then all of a sudden, John is caught up in the flames, and he's being erased. It's really kind of horrific splash page showing him. And Superman does what he can to try and save his son, but it's all for naught. John disappears in front of their very eyes, and there's this there's this great panel as he's being erased, and it, and it, it's a close up of his face. And in one panel, and the next panel, most of his face is gone, and his eyes are starting to glow with that white bluish energy, and he just fades away. And then all you, and all you see. And this third panel next to it is just these eyes that are disappearing, and then he's gone. And that is that is basically how it ends. Um, they, they Lois notices that the 
or I guess, no, I guess it's Superman no, notices that all the pictures in the book that, that, that Clark Kent left, they're all, they're not, there's nothing there. The pictures, the images are, are, are also erased. And so, um, Superman says that Clark Kent took him and we're going to make him give John back. And so then, then it goes into, uh, part two. But then at, at the very end of this book, there is this, who is Clark Kent one page feature talking about, um, who this Clark Kent is. So essentially it says here, how on earth could this new Clark have the power to pull off such an audacious, malicious attack? Play supervillain profiler to break down the list of prime suspects behind the Man of Steel's secret identity theft. And so it gives a list of six characters, and I thought some of them were interesting. So one is Bizarro, who is currently uh, in the Red Hood comic, I believe, as part of what they're calling the Dark Trinity, which which I don't read, but I understand that According to this, anyway, this little uh, brief description, uh, he's shown. So, where, like I said, he's in 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 uh, Red Hood, uh, where he's shown more brains than than or having more brains than past iterations. So that that's interesting. Another interesting character, which I also thought of at some point, uh, is the New Fifty Two Superman. Uh, it says here, depowered, dead, or deported to another dimension. This is comics after all, which I thought that was a nice little meta reference. Could the new 52 Superman have lost his powers and been mind wiped to forget he was ever the man of steel? Right. Because he can never just turn bad, uh, which I'm, which I appreciate because I, I hated it when they did that to the golden age Superman. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, not identity crisis. The other one. <laughs> Uh, I'm forgetting my DC events. Anyway, when, when that, when that character Superman showed up again with Superboy Prime and, uh, you know, they, Superboy Prime punched walls, punched, punched through the universal walls and caused things to change. Anyway, that one, that event, you, you fill in the blank. You know what I'm talking about. We'll, we'll just pretend I do too. Um, anyway, (laughs) so I thought that was interesting. Uh, perhaps new, new 50 Superman, the Eradicator, uh, Magog, who I don't, we haven't seen a rebirth version of, says, could a rebirth comeback by Magog mark the beginning uh, of the end of the original Man of Steel? Although, they consider the pre-Flashpoint Superman the original Man of Steel? That's interesting. Uh, Martian Man- Manhunter, maybe on the, under the influence of, of some powerful psychic person. Eradicator, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is in, I I kind of blew off Eradicator, but but it's interesting because Eradicator did show up early on in in one of the Rebirth storylines, uh, along with Doomsday. So you know Doomsday's with Oz, Eradicator already showed up. So what's going on there? I kind of thought um, that when the, they did the Rebirth stuff, that we were getting these these greatest hits, and I thought, why are we why are we coming back to some of these characters like Doomsday and the Eradicator and etc. Do we really need to do that? I, I was kind of turned off by that, quite frankly. But now that I see what I see, kind of what they're doing here, somewhat, I find it a little more interesting. So there you go. And then there's one other character here that I'm not going to talk about just yet. I'll come back to that one. So that is uh, the that's part one of the story. Part two in Action Comics nine seventy five. That is basically, um, that's the reveal. That's the reveal of the big bad. So Superman goes to Clark Kent in uh, the the new Clark Kent, the faux Clark Kent, I like to think of him, confronts him. And that's when we find out, uh, actually, there's this, there's, this, there's this nice sequence where this Clark Kent confronts our Superman says, oh, wait, Superman says, what kind of sick game is this? And the, and Clark Kent says, game, I like games. Let's play. And then he transforms himself into, uh, Lex Luthor in, in the uh, green and purple armor saying, you're a smart guy. You must know who I am. Say my name. And he, and Superman says, Luthor. And the guy goes, "Er, wrong, wrong, wrong. And then, and then, so then we get a series of splash pages where 
the the faux Clark Kent turns into Bizarro. So there's that connection there uh, with one of the characters that I just talked about. Uh, then there's there's um, uh, Brainiac. Then there's Mongol, and then Parasite. And and each time the 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 faux Clark Kent is saying, you know, say my name, say it, say my name. Um, uh, the, uh, the cyborg Superman shows up doomsday. And at that point, Superman's starting to figure it out. There's only one possibility, but then Lois says, Mr. And then Superman, uh, finishes it for Mitch's Pitalik. It's, it's, it's the, the fifth dimension imp back in the DC rebirth universe. Now, which I did not see coming. <laughs> I fully expected this to be Superboy Prime uh, until until we got this issue, quite frankly, when there, there's all these transformations going on. And, and great, great visuals here on these splash pages, especially if you're looking at the backgrounds. There's all this candy. And uh, I think, is it just candy? Can- oh, to- candy and toys. You know, yeah, there's a unicorn in here these furry creatures that are kind of smiling demonically at us. Uh, yeah, that unicorn looks really ticked, <laughs> but you know, it, it's, it's very childlike. So uh, if you hadn't figured out in, until now, it, you know, it seems kind of obvious, especially in, in hindsight, but here is uh Mixius Pilik, or as I used to call him mix Uh, thank you. Power. One of those Superman power records for mispronouncing his name. But, but that is, so, so it's, it, Mixie is behind the Clark Kent and, um, the disappearance of John Kent, which we find out in, in the second story. Well, he, he tells us as much in this first story, but we get the, the behind the scenes, um, at the, uh, with the, with the second story here by, uh, Paul Denny and Ian Churchill. I'll get to that in a minute, but, um, so, so here's the big bad, uh, you know, what have you done with our son? They want to know. And, uh, but, but Mixie is, is playing a little game too. So, uh, with that, with Lois and Clark, anyway, he disappears and Superman says, I have no idea where to find him. Uh, and Lois says, find who Clark and what are you doing? And what are we doing in your old apartment? Lois, are you okay? I'm fine. Why do you ask? And who's this Mixie, whatever you're talking about, Lois, John, we have to get John back. John, she says, John who? And so she's forgetting her own son. Ah, uh, that would be, that'd be awful. <laughs> uh, and then, like I said, we get this, we get this uh, second story, the man in the purple hat with some great throwback art, you know, golden age, silver age uh, styled art featuring Superman and Mitch's Pitalik. And we find out that uh, uh, Mixus Pitalik took John, and he's he's gonna he's going to keep John there as his play companion, since Superman forgot all about him. It's also a way to punish Superman, obviously. Uh, but we we find out, you know, that Mixie came back to Earth to to wreak havoc with Superman, and that's when Mister Oz captured him. And then there is this. Well, there's this scene where Mixie's basically like, you know what, whatever, um, people are going to be looking for me, my wife, Batmite, uh, to which Mr. Oz says, what is time to immortal beings of the fifth dimension? 2,000 Earth years will pass before it occurs to them you are gone. And uh, Mixie's like, okay, but Superman, he'll realize that I'm I'm missing. It, it was the end of, at the end of uh, the, the 90 days, he can't, he would have come back, but he, but he didn't. So he's going to, he's going to search him out. And he says, yep, any minute. And then the next page is there's all these tick marks of presumably days that, that he's been waiting for Superman to come rescue him. And he, he finally makes the realization that Superman did not care that he didn't show up. He doesn't care about Mixie at all. And that kind of ticks him off. <laughs> but there's this, there's another great scene in here where, uh, back to Mixie and John talking and, uh, Mixie says, I was part of it all from the beginning. Well, almost the beginning. The comics, the toys. I was on the cartoon show. John says the cartoon show. 
Mixie says, you've got to think outside the third dimension, Junior. This thing between me and your pop, it spans realities. Superman and Mix, uh, Mr. Mixie's Pitalik. Mixie's Tapolk. Mixoplik. <laughs> Infinite variations. What's life and death in this world are pages in a coloring book one dimension over. And there, and uh, as he, as he's saying this, there you can see in the background. There's, you can see the the animated series uh, Superman with the animated series version of Mixie. You see uh, the Lego version of both characters. Uh, superpowers toys in the background. It, it's a great little scene. Uh, so I thought that was really cool that that uh, Mixie can uh, is also aware of the the multi dimensional aspects of. Uh, Superman and well, essentially DC Comics as we know it and everything involved with that. Uh, but he he is able, you know, he finally resolves to get out by saying his name backwards, which is how if, if he says that, he returns to the fifth dimension. That's how Superman always tricked him in the past, right? Uh, but, uh, but it was, again, interesting that Mixie says, you must have heard about that magic word of mine, the one I let your pa think he tricks me into blurting out. So even that is part of the game, but he keeps to it. He keeps, that is one of the rules and he sticks by the rule, which I thought that, I thought that was really cool. So, but he, but he does that. He says, he says the, his name's back, his name backwards multiple times and that allows him to break free from Mr. Oz's, uh, prison. Uh, but Mr. Oz's little trap, energy trap, uh, is after him. So Mixie decides uh, at the last second to turn himself into Clark Kent so much so that he does not realize who he actually is. And so that's how we get the, the faux Clark Kent in the storyline. I, that, that nice, I thought that was a nice touch, a nice way to do that. Uh, but when, he, but when that, that faux Clark Kent came across the, uh, the Kent's farmhouse and saw Superman, Lois, and John together, the whole Superman family, all together without me, my family, he says, that's when, that's what did it. I remembered everything. It all came flooding back, my abduction, the prison, and above all else, the reality, the reality that I had been left behind, written out, forgotten. And then I was back too. And, uh, and so that was, that's basically it. John tries to make, make his escape, but it doesn't work. He's still trapped with Mixie and that's the end of the issue. Part three, uh, we see, uh, John's disappearance. Uh, that I just described in part one from his point of view where he, where it looks like uh, his parents disappear in front of his eyes. Uh, and that's when he shows up in Mixie's dimension. Although I'm not quite sure where the story that I just told you about in action comics, 975, where that fits in with John's appearance here, because not long after the scene where Lois says, who is John? And, and Superman's just imploring her, he's our son. Lois, I, I need you to remember our son. But Lois doesn't. And then uh, Mixius Pitalik shows up uh, once Superman is demands that he show up. And uh, then Mixie transports him and Lois to this place, um, which is which Mixie refers to as the infinite planet, uh, you know, after the daily planet. So there's this this huge building that stretches up, 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 up with the, the daily planet globe, giant daily planet globe on top. And uh, presumably that's where John is. And uh, Mixie basically says, you can have your son back if you can get to him and make Superman sign this contract. Contract. And uh, in the meantime, so, so, so Superman and Lois are doing that. They're, they're trying to play this game with Mixie. There's this great uh, two-page splash where there's this board game of Superman's life and all these, uh, you know, uh, kid board game type images. It looks almost, it's, it's like shoot, Superman shoots and ladders, which I thought was kind of cool, but showing some, some, some of the inset panels are showing, uh, some poignant or significant moments in some cases, like Superman's death, uh, after he fought doomsday. I thought that was kind of cool, but, uh, but the second part of this is John kind of trapped there floating there waiting to be rescued but but he's he is um visited by these these two balls of energy these two red balls of energy 
and they're they're talking to him but we don't know what they're saying quite yet but you know he asked them yeah but who are you and then so those pictures that i mentioned from the album that disappeared as well they're kind of all floating around john too and then when john asked those the 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 red balls of energy you know who you are then one of the pictures transforms into the new 52 superman and lois lane whom he think who john thinks is is uh or his parents, but they're, but they're not, but they allow him, they, they transfer some energy, some of that red energy to John and allows him to break free of his prison just at the point where Superman himself forgets John's name. And so he breaks free, surprising Mixie as well. And at the very end, the very last page of this, of this uh, issue is, um, Superman holding John and Lois, but it's the new 52 version of Superman and new 52 version of Lois Lane. And to which Mixie exclaims, Deja new 52. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to backtrack a little bit. So, um, like I said in that in, uh, issue one or part one of this issue or part one of the story, they had all those characters uh you know who 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 could be the supervillain behind this and i said one of them i i wasn't going to talk about well it was mr mixes pitalik which i why why would they do that i mean all these other characters may except for the maybe magog uh ha, has appeared already recently in in the in the superman and action comics stories but well maybe not martian manor but you know he's around but Mixie hadn't. He's the only one really, you know, because he's, he's the guy. So why would you tip your hat like that? Why not just totally make it a secret and, and a surprise? Because once I saw that, it's like, oh, it might, it's probably Mixie, right? Anyway, but that's, you know, they made that choice. And then we get to uh, part four, which is Action Comics 976. Like I said, it has the two Supermen on the cover. And uh, the first few pages is basically the New 52 version of Superman, which I have to say, nice to have him back. I, I really like that New 52 Superman. When, when the very first thing that I saw him in was Justice League number one after, after the New 52 launch. And I really liked the guy. I, you know, he was younger, a little more brash, a little more prone to um, uh, reacting instead of, instead of uh, being a little more introspective, which, which the pre-Flashpoint Superman had kind of developed into. So I kind of like that, that brashness. That's, that's, that's the one word description of the new 52 Superman that I really liked. And it, and it did, I, I'll be honest, it, it did annoy me that they replaced him with the, the pre flashpoint Superman in an attempt to placate older fans like me, I guess. You know, the, the, the interesting storyline that they were, that they were storylines that they were doing with the new 52 Superman, where they depowered him, they got him together with Wonder Woman, which I thought was really cool, you know, and then, and then he gets his powers back and, and just as soon after that, he dies, you know, it's like, oh, come on. So anyway, it's nice to see him. He and Mixie fight. In the meantime, John is trying to get, uh, the Superman Lois Lane to remember him as their son. And then he's visited by a couple other balls of energy, only these are blue. Uh, and it turns out that those two are his mom and pop. And so this is what this is. And so here's the, the thing that happens next. This is why I want to talk about this. I thought this was really interesting. So Mixie basically hightails it out of there and. Um, after oh no i'm sorry let me back up so same thing uh the the blue balls of energy um show up they they empower john with this energy and that allows him to basically zap at at uh at mixie and so mixie's had enough at this point after fighting both superman and and superboy john uh let's see here because of that, because of that explosion of energy, Mixie tells him, this whole place is coming down and something way worse than me is going to notice. My beef is with your pops, not you. I'll give you one last chance to join me out of here before the real trouble goes down. Be my new super pal. Of course, John doesn't. 
and Mixie disappears. Well, then, so then uh, Superman, Lois, John are talking, you know, please believe me, I'm your son, you're my parents. Uh, you see the the two forms of John's actual parents just kind of floating there. Uh, but now it now it's on Lois, or you know, the the new fifty two version of Lois Lane, who says, "I think maybe we should believe him. He's so genuine. He obviously believes what he's saying." And then that's when the the energy forms, the blue energy forms, go into the the physical bodies of the new fifty two version of Superman and Lois Lane, and then suddenly they remember who John is and all the stuff that happened. There they kiss. John's hugging both of them, and there's all this swirl of blue and red and purplish energies going on. It's like this big explosion of of energy going going on around this wherever they're at this pocket little universe. And we get this uh, narration by Mister Oz. I didn't think it was possible that Superman, his his wife and son, could repair what was broken. I'm not the only one. He didn't think Superman could do it either. Now this, and then we get this this cool two pages of of the events of Superman's life from being blasted away from Krypton when it was destroyed to the Kents finding him to growing up in Smallville to going to Metropolis, being Superman, fighting Doomsday, marrying Lois, getting pregnant, them getting pregnant, having John. And in the middle are all the all the villains in in kind of a the uh, Superman shield shape. But uh, so, the text reads: This changes everything. A new existence wide single reality rebuilt from two, a timeline in history both familiar, and new with lives realigned, consistent with the memories and experiences of all, everything solidified, locked in, so it all fits. And then you turn the page and there's a splash of Superman in a, in a new costume, <laughs> a, a uh, blending of his, the, his previous rebirth costume and uh, new 52 version, no armor, but the red boots are back uh, with a different red belt. And he says, I'm back. We're back and everything is going to be fine. And then they, they, they're on earth again. They're at the daily planet and then they fly off. And uh, Superman tells his son, you save the day, lead the way, Superboy, and they fly up together. Um, Again, Mr. Oz, incredible. That family has done the impossible, proven that true love really can conquer all. For them and those connected to them, twin realities are now united as one, yet questions remain. Is it over, or is there more? Considering what had been set in motion and the forces behind it, is it Superman who has final say or him? And what we see is uh, during those last few narration boxes, uh, we see the Earth and the Moon, and then you close in on the Moon and you see the red planet Mars behind it, and then the very last panel is a you see Mars. So, two very interesting things about this storyline to me. One is that we get... We get one Superman now. It's presumably one Superman. So there's not going to be two. The the universe is not going to remember two Supermen. So the one aspect about about, uh, the rebirth Superman coming into things and not being quite trusted by his friends and uh, that aspect of it, that's presumably gone, uh, which is unfortunate. However, I am looking forward to seeing how this melding of the two versions of Superman, Superman, two versions of, of the, of Superman. I think that's the proper way to say it. Uh, anyway, the, the, the melding of these two characters, uh, how, so how was this Superman going to be? Like I said, the new 52 version of Superman, I said, you know, I, I think of him as more brash. He's younger. He, he was more prone to just kind of lashing out and, and, and showing his strength. Uh, whereas uh, the pre-Flashpoint Superman, you know, is older, a little more wiser, a little more um, introspective. So what kind of a Superman are we going to get now? I am going to presume that we're basically going to get the pre-Flashpoint Superman regardless. 
uh, because that seems to be the the uh, the focus, the thrust of this character right now. Uh, but it will be interesting to see from an in v- in universe standpoint uh, how the story progresses now that Superman and Lois Lane are the only version that exists in this universe. There there weren't two, but they had their son, so you know that that'll play into it, obviously. So as a DC fan, as a Superman fan, I'm very curious what uh, or how this will be moving forward. And then you have the pretty much overt references to to Doctor Manhattan, you know, the the Watchman character, who ha- it has been presumed was behind the the New Fifty Two version of the DC universe. So when Flashpoint happened. You know, the theory goes that somehow, for some reason, Dr. Manhattan uh, interfered with things as the universe was being redrawn. And we, you know, the the characters lost, you know, essentially 10 years of their lives, as we found out in the DC Rebirth special. And so up to that, uh, and, 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 and I want to mention too the, the, uh, the Watchmen button that Batman found in the Batcave, you know, so that set that up obviously uh, for a confrontation down the road. But uh, it appears that they're tr- DC is trying to uh, put Superman in the forefront, even though there's the, the, the crossover story between Batman and the flash regarding that button. So I'm looking forward to reading that in in conjunction with in in, in companionship with this Superman Reborn storyline to see. So it appears like they're they're setting up this this uh, confrontation or you know whatever this event type thing will be between the DC superhero characters and the Watchmen characters as well. But I'm I'm actually less interested in that <laughs> uh, than I am, you know, what's next for Superman. And, and his cast of characters. Because this title, like I said in my uh, recent uh, favorites of 2016, the, the Superman title was, was one of my favorite of the year, which is, which is lovely because I, I, I dig Superman. I, I, I always have. He's always been one of my favorite characters. And I think he gets a... I think a lot of people just... Like I said in that... In that I'm going to repeat myself, but... <laughs> I think a lot of people just kind of write him off you know, as the big blue boy scout and there's not a lot interesting going on with his character and all this stuff. I disagree. (laughs) Uh, I will say though, you know, I'll put on my fanboy hat here. I, I actually haven't enjoyed all that much. The aspect of him being a father. Uh, I think that the team of Tomasi and Gleason and and company did a better job at exploring a superhero father with a superhero son dynamic in the Batman and Robin series. Uh, for some reason that worked, that worked better for me. It could be just that I think the, that uh, Damian Wayne is a much more interesting character than John Kent is. I don't think that between Tomasi and Gleason and Jurgens and, uh, Monk, at least more recently, as far as the artist goes, uh, I don't, I don't see a consistency Oh, and, and there's the Super Sons um, series that's out right now, too. Uh, I don't see a consistency in how John Kent is portrayed. Uh, in one book, he, he, he sounds like a younger kid than he does in the other book, which I hope they get that resolved pretty soon because that, that's annoying to me. Whereas Damien Wayne, for the most part, I think has been pretty well consistently presented. So I, that may contribute. Plus, Damian Wayne's been around a lot longer than John Kent. So I was annoyed by Damian Wayne when I first started reading him too. But he was still an in- interesting character to me. Uh, where John has been kind of hit or miss, like I said. He's, he's not quite there yet for me. But anyway, I this was a really cool storyline. Uh, I liked what they did with it. You know, even you know, like I said, even from the covers down to the reveal of the villain to the the uh this universal universe affecting event you know i the whole the whole idea of you know true love conquers all you know okay that's a little sappy uh but i don't i don't necessarily buy that that 
is the only reason. I think that's just, you know, that that's the impetus that their Superman and Lois's love for each other and their love for their son John helped bind them together provide a strength that allowed them to do what happened here where these two characters these two or two sets of characters were able to combine into one i think there's more to it than than just this love aspect that created this unified storyline for these characters now so that is really where i'm intrigued how did that come about? Why did that come about? Why were there two, you know, why why was the Convergence storyline that we got with the pre-Flashpoint Superman, why was that allowed to stick around? Um, you know, besides, I'm talking in-universe, in right? I'm not, you know, DC editorial is like, yeah, let's, just, let's do this thing. <laughs> I mean, that's the real reason for it, right? But, it, but But it's enough to get me interested. I hope it gets you guys interested maybe in reading this. Um, reading Superman and action comics again. If you haven't, haven't been doing so for those that, that, uh, have been reading it. I, I'm, I'd be really curious what you thought of this story. Uh, I'm sure I'm, you know, I glossed over a lot of things in the storyline cause I want to talk in depth about each issue, but, um, you know, I, like I said, I may have missed some things. So if you would point those out to me, uh, if you've got some other ideas, I'd God, I'd love to love to discuss those. So, you know, let me know. I'd be glad to talk over these things with you. You can always uh, do that at the at the the website longboxreview.com. You can leave comments uh, where this episode will be posted. Uh, you can always email me as well as always at longboxreview at gmail.com. And uh, if if you uh, are on Twitter, you can follow me at longboxreview, and we can converse there as well. So as always, uh, thanks for listening, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.